Hello, my friends. Welcome to Hips and Headstands. My name is Sonia, a certified yoga teacher. So I'm so happy you're here to join me. And please don't be shy. Say hi in the comments. I would love to meet whoever is taking these classes. This class has a mix of a lot of dynamic, flowy movements with some power poses sprinkled in to build strength and stamina and a strong core, which is the base of all yoga movements and postures, especially headstands. And I'm going to be doing some hip openers as well because those always feel super nice for the body. Let's begin in a comfortable seated position with eyes closed to connect with our body and our breathing. I like to notice the subtle buzzing sensation throughout my body, especially the outline of my human form. <laughs> to pay attention to how it feels. And I'm tuning into the quality of my breath, just observing what it's like, where I'm breathing. Is it more in the belly, more in the chest? And consciously beginning to extend our inhales and our exhales, making our breathing deeper and fuller really breathing in as much oxygen as possible naturally fuel our cells in our body place your left palm on the mat beside you and begin to move your right hand up and over your right ear then flowing to the opposite side by placing the right palm on the mat next to you with left arm reaching up and overhead all the way to the right side. Flowing back and forth, I like to keep my eyes closed to really tune into how my body feels and where the stretch is located, what the stretch feels like, just being curious and moving in a way that feels good. Now creating subtle flexibility in our spine by moving in a circular motion from the hip joints. You can make the circles small, or big circles do whatever feels nice for your body and switching our movement in the opposite direction now Transitioning to seated cat cow. On the inhale, arch your chin and your chest up to the sky. And then on your exhale, curl your spine, tucking your chin to your chest, bringing your belly button to your spine. And now we freestyle, so I welcome you to do any sort of slithery, circular motion, activating all dimensions of your spine and your core. If you are sitting cross-legged, place your hands on the mat in front of you and begin to roll forward over your knees until you're sitting back on your heels in hero position. Keeping our palms on the mat in front of us, begin to slowly lift your hips, paralleling the right shin to the side of your mat and extending the left leg out to the side. Stretching the upper torso and side body once more by waving our arms overhead from side to side. Finding our center in the torso. Move the right foot in a little bit, pivoting over the knee so that it's at an angle pointing towards your left leg. And then shoot the hips back, folding forward in a half child's pose with leg extended. Slowly bring the chest up while simultaneously paralleling your right shin to the top of your mat. You may take a back bend here in a variation of wild thing, bringing the left foot in slightly, placing the right hand behind you either on your calf, ankle, or the mat beside you, and reaching overhead with the left hand. 
Slowly bring both hands in front of you, squat your hips back slightly, and bring the left foot in. Sitting on both heels, now we'll move on to the other side. Straighten the right leg out to the side of you, and parallel the left shin to the other side of your mat. Now continue with those side-to-side -side flowy motions with the arms. Place both hands on the mat in front of you and begin to angle your left shin 45 degrees towards your body, pivoting over the knee. Then push your hips back, folding forward. You can rest on your forearms or move all the way down, flexing the right foot as well. Raise the hips slightly to bring the right foot back in, sitting on your heels. While activating your belly muscles, twist to the right side, placing both your palms on the mat, reversing the left palm so the fingertips are pointed towards your knees, really stretching the inner forearm and wrist. Release to center, engaging the core now and twisting over to the left side, placing both palms on the mat. Now take your right palm and twist it so that your fingertips are pointed towards your knees and begin to stretch the wrist and inner forearm. Flip your right fingertips back forward so everything's neutral. Right leg extends straight out behind you. Squeeze your core to lift yourself up into plank as you bring the left foot to meet the right. Shoulders stacked over wrists and imagine your body to be a perfect straight line. Keeping the elbows near the ribs, fingers spread wide and rooted into the earth, broadening the chest, begin to lower by bending the elbows in a chaturanga or a push-up, all the way to the mat. You may also bring your knees to the mat as you lower down. Placing the hands near the chest, elbows are close to rib cage, engage your legs, draw your navel to your spine and shoulders away from ears, Open your heart by broadening the chest up towards the sky. So your shoulder blades are moving towards each other and down towards the tailbone, bending your back, arching it upward. You can play around with bending your knees here too, trying to reach your toes to your head. Remember to keep your belly engaged and strong, flexing your core, and don't forget to breathe through all these poses. Really trying to expand the capacity of how much air we can take in with every breath, deepening our breathing. Keep the knees bent here, and we're gonna move into a dynamic cobra. Bend your elbows, make sure they're hugging your sides as you lower down in a push-up to the mat. And then on your inhale, straighten your arms, lifting your chest and your chin up to the sky, arching your back. When you're lowering your chest to the mat, simultaneously squeeze your glutes and lift your thighs up off the mat. So we're adding a little bit of a booty workout in here too. <laughs> Now extend your legs, bring your arms in front of you. You can rest your forehead on your arms or the mat and just take a little rest here. All right, let's get back into it. Place your hands near your chest. I like to go on my fists because sometimes I have some wrist issues. Squeeze your belly and your back muscles and push yourself up to a plank. Lift your hips up to the sky. Your chest will begin to bend in the direction of your thighs, hinging from the hips. We're in downward facing dog now. You can bend one knee at a time, pedal out the heels that are reaching towards the mat. Ensure that the pressure is evenly distributed in your hands and your shoulders are relaxed away from your ears and your neck is long, hanging with your gaze in between your feet. 
From down dog, imagine a string lifting the space in between your shoulders up to the sky as you roll your body forward into a plank and then immediately dropping the hips and flowing the chest and chin upwards into upward facing dog. And lift the hips up and back, stacking them over your knees and extend your palms forward as you lower your chest to the floor for puppy. Moving dynamic in circles if that is what your body is asking you to do. This is super yummy for opening up the shoulders. Lift onto both fingertips and slide your left hand underneath your right, falling onto your shoulder and placing your left temple on the mat. If you want to get creative with your body, you can extend your right leg straight out to the side of you so it's 90 degrees from your torso. Twisting from the belly, right arm and chest open up to the sky and breathe. I was also seeing if I can grab my right toes with my left fingers, just for fun. It was a little awkward, but it's all about exploring. Keeping the right leg extended, release the left arm and bring it to the top of your mat to meet the right. Then sit your hips back into that yummy half child's pose posture again. Coming back up to tabletop, we will move on to the other side. So left foot extends straight out to the side of you. Right arm slides underneath the left, twisting from the core, dropping the shoulder onto the mat and the temple. And then left arm reaches up, opening the chest to the sky. Untangle yourself back to a neutral spine with your hands on the mat in front of you, sitting back your hips into that yummy child's pose. Find your way into tabletop by bending the left leg and bringing it back in to meet the right. Now for the next minute or so, I invite you to just move whatever feels good. I like to do cat-cow, hip circles, spinal circles, moving back onto my heels with the hips and going into more circular directions. Can you tell I like circles? There must be something spiritual about that. <laughs> Flowing in all range of motions possible. Just try to get your body in the space around you, moving things that you haven't moved before and just feeling the movement instead of thinking, just feel. Okay, tuck the toes, lift the knees off the mat to straighten the legs to downward facing dog. And I'm going to continue to flow it out with some spinal waves. To do this, lift that space in between your shoulders up to the sky, curling your shoulders in as you roll over to plank, then bending the knees and straightening your spine, lifting the hips up to the sky, back for downward facing dog. You can reverse this direction as well by bending your elbows and shooting your chest forward and up and then rolling your spine back into down dog. Lift your right heel up to the sky from down dog. If you have a wall nearby, this really helps to stretch the hamstring of the left leg. Then swing your right foot forward, engaging the core and place it in between your hands. Drop the back heel, lift your arms and your chest up for warrior one. Strong engagement in the legs. Hips are squared to the front of your mat. Open your left hip and torso to the side of your mat, extending your arms straight and gazing over your front fingertips. Warrior two. Maintaining steady breath, drop your left hand to place it behind your thigh and reach your right arm up to the sky. Straighten the front leg and really feel the stretch. 
Then bring your spine into neutral. Walk the back foot in a little bit so that you can square your hips to the front of the mat, keeping both legs straight. Left hand reaches above your booty and your right fingertips go as far as you can forward until you can't go anymore and then drop your hand either to your shin on either side of your foot. Then open your chest, stacking your shoulders on top of each other, straightening the arms for triangle pose. Keep your core strong. I like to drop my neck to relax it and sometimes I get a crack and it feels really good. <laughs> deep breath in and deep breath out. Bending the knee of my right leg now, moving the back foot a little bit further back just to create some space for a bind. So the right arm is reaching underneath the right thigh towards the back, bending at the elbow to meet the left arm, which is also reaching behind you. This is a pretty intense shoulder stretch, so you don't have to clasp your fingers, but just try to maintain a position where you're really building fire and heat in the quadriceps and the legs and opening the chest up. You can even keep your right hand on the mat. If you are in a bind, release it and place both hands at the top of your mat, stepping back into downward facing dog. On your next inhale, lift the left heel up to the sky. Three-legged downward dog, really stretching here. Chest reaches towards the thighs. And then exhale, bring that left foot forward, place it in between your hands. Drop the back heel, lift the chest and arms up for warrior one. Bring the right hip forward a bit to square the hips. Relax the shoulders away from the ears and breathe. Open your hips and torso to the side for warrior two. Hand mudras are welcome. <laughs> Reverse your warrior. Straighten the left leg and see if you can bend even further into that back bend. Then bring your back foot in a couple inches, squaring your hips to the front of your mat. Taking your left hand out in front of you, reaching as far as you can forward, then bending down, placing your left hand on the mat or on your foot or shin. Twisting from your belly, opening the chest up to the sky. Shoulders are stacked. Triangle pose. Unfortunately, I left my blocks back across the country when I moved, but I do encourage props like a block so you can place your left hand on it and raise uh, your chest. It really helps to elevate the pose by putting you in a proper alignment. So props elevate yoga. It's not a sign that you're not doing enough, you know? Props are good, <laughs> always. Bend the front knee. We're going to move into that bind again. So left arm goes underneath the left thigh, reaching a bending at the elbow for your other hand. Open the chest here. And stay strong in the legs that are rooting you and keeping you grounded in this pose. Release the bind and place your hands on the mat in front of you. Step the left foot back, raise the hips up, and make your way to downward facing dog. Spinal waves are welcome here as well.
If your arms or wrists are getting tired, you can drop your knees to the mat and lower down into that puppy pose that we did earlier. All right, if you're in down dog, drop the knees for tabletop. If you're in puppy, lift the chest for tabletop and we're gonna transition onto our belly and make our way for bow pose. So bend the knees, reach back and grab ankles or the tops of your feet. And then as you inhale, lift the chest and thighs, pressing your shins and ankles back to open the chest as you're pressing into your hands. Lift the head and neck away from the ears and keep breathing. Then release and lower down onto your belly and take a couple breaths here just for some rest. Turn yourself over now onto your back and bring your knees in towards your chest. Bringing your feet flat on the mat, hips width apart and a few inches from your sits bones. Take a deep breath in as you lift your hips and your thighs up to the sky. Keep your knees parallel to one another so they're not drawing outwards. Okay and your chest is lifting up, chin tucking to the chest, rolling onto the outer shoulders, interlacing the fingers if that feels comfortable, or you can keep your arms flat on the ground. Lower down one vertebrae at a time until your hips and your sacrum meet the mat. For a brief moment, bring your knees into the chest, and then we're gonna transition into happy baby. So lying on the floor here, keeping the sacrum flat on the ground, grab hold of the outside of your feet or your toes and keep your knees outside your chest, bringing the knees down towards the floor on either side of the body. All right, we're gonna activate our core a little bit more now as we transition into plow pose next. So straighten your legs to the sky and then begin to pulse using your abs, lifting your hips off the ground so your feet move up to the sky even more. Hinging at the hips to lower the legs slightly, then bringing them back up in another pulsing rotation. Now try to gain a little bit more momentum because the next time you pulse, you're gonna lift your hips up as high as you can so you roll onto your shoulders and then your hands support your low back. Finding our way into shoulder stand, which is a good pose to counteract handstands or headstands, which we will move on to later. Explore your range of motion here, maybe dropping one foot to the floor at a time or both feet. This is a very intense hamstring stretch and spinal stretch. Both arms are now placed on the ground behind me for full plow pose. Or you can reach for your toes. It's important to keep your neck straight here, not turning it side to side because we don't want to have any injuries here. So you're gazing towards your belly button.
If your legs are lowered, lift them back straight to the sky for shoulder stand, placing your hands on your low back. Further strengthening our core muscles here. Keep the legs straight, hinging at the hips, lower so that they're parallel to the ground and then lift up to the sky. Mind muscle connection here. Your mind is focused on your belly, your abdomen and you're engaging those muscles. This is kind of like a preparation for headstand where you lift your feet off the ground into uh, the full expression. So we're training those muscles um, for a little bit of mind memory as well. To safely come out of this pose, bring your knees to your forehead and then slowly vertebrae by vertebrae, roll over your spine to seated. You can continue to do these rolls on your back for a little bit of a massage until you find your way into the seated position. This is a good time to grab some water if you'd like because our next pose is headstand, sursasana. So begin with your forearms and your knees on the mat, elbows directly under your shoulders. Interlace your fingers, bringing them to the back of the head. Your crown of your head is flat on the floor, not your forehead. Straighten the legs bringing your feet closer to your head a little by little until your hips are over your shoulders. Then with knees bent, lift one leg at a time or two legs if you can and straighten your legs up to the sky, activating your legs and your feet but keeping the glutes relaxed. If you have a wall here, it's very helpful to maintain this pose. If you can't quite make it into full headstand yet, you can build strength by practicing that walking motion of your feet towards your head, going back and forth, really focusing on your core muscles as you do so. To safely get out of this pose, begin to bend your knees fully, and then with precision, slowly move your knees down towards your sides until your feet touch the mat. Then sit your hips back into child's pose and take a couple rounds of deep, slow breathing. You can repeat headstand one more time or handstand, or if you wanna follow along with me, I'm gonna move into pincha or feathered peacock. So our elbows are parallel, hands on the ground, wrists in line with the elbows. Coming into dolphin, so shooting the hips kind of like a down dog and then back forward into a plank just to begin activating the shoulders. And walk your feet forward, attempting to get your hips stacked over your shoulders. Hop with both feet up towards the sky into pincha. Again, a wall is very helpful here and core is engaged, core is strong. This is what is holding the posture. Shoulders are strong as well. Then bring your feet to the mat one by one, sitting the hips back for child's pose. Shake it out, stretch it out here. I'm interlacing my fingers behind my back and opening up my chest to stretch my shoulders as well because intuitively it felt nice. When sitting back on your heels, if this is uncomfortable, you can place a blanket over top of your heels or underneath them to help. All right, we have two options here, either camel or reverse table. So for camel, your knees and ankles are hips width apart. I begin with my hands on my heels and then I press my hips and thighs forward and up, bending through the upper spine, opening the shoulders down and relaxing the head. For reverse tabletop, your feet are on the mat and your hands are on the mat behind you with your fingertips pointing towards your heels. Lift the hips up into a straight line of your front body, dropping the neck if that feels comfortable. Keep lifting from your hips, squeezing your glutes here. This is also a really nice shoulder stretch. If you're in camel pose, to safely come out of this pose, bring your hands to your low back, engage your core as you lift yourself up. Then gently sit your hips back, 
Begin to angle your feet to the side and then in front of you, and we're gonna lower onto our backs for our final resting pose, Shavasana. Resting heavy, releasing all the muscles in your body. Begin to take a mental scan of your body right now from your head to the tips of your toes. I want you to tune in to the sensations that are happening all around your body, the energy, the prana, that life force that is flowing through and circulating through you right now. This yoga class really aimed to open up all those channels, the chakras. We did a lot of hip opening at the root, our base, our feeling of groundedness and security, all the way to headstand, which is opening up our higher consciousness, our crown chakra, and all the chakras in between, opening up those channels so that energy can freely flow and we can feel vital and blissful in every moment. Begin to wiggle your toes and your fingers. Roll on to the side of your mat in a fetal position and then lift yourself up into seated. Amazing, you just did something wonderful for your body. If you like this class, please show your love by liking and commenting and subscribing. And if you would also like to support me with a small contribution on Patreon, that would be so, so, so lovely because it motivates me to continue making classes um, and daily content on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and really dive into yoga and immerse myself in yoga fully so that I can relay this information and whatever I learn to all of you. So thank you again. I wish you all a wonderful rest of your day.